The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. All hit radio. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Back, Exxon Nation. I'm Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center and studios in beautiful Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. As you can tell by the scene of Hamilton behind me here from our studios atop the escarpment in Ontario, in Hamilton. And that's uh, Hamilton Bay. That's downtown Hamilton. And as you can see, the sun is setting on this gorgeous summer day. My guest this hour is Josh Hurd, and he is an author, speaker, filmmaker, and host of Conversations in the Dark and The Ectoplasm Show. Ever since Josh was young, he's had an interest for all things paranormal. It wasn't until he was in college and found a group of like-minded people that he began to investigate the things that go bump in the night. After a terrifying experience, Josh was inspired to write his first book entitled When Ghost Hunting Goes Wrong, A Brush with Evil. Josh currently lives in Iowa and kept busy writing books, doing films, videos, speaking, and bird watching from his backyard. Joining me now is Josh Hurd, and hey, Josh, welcome back to the (laughs) (laughs) X-Zone. Thanks for having me, brother. Uh, So what's new with you in the world of the paranormal? Oh, my goodness, man. I am uh, keeping very, very busy lately, that is for sure. Um, Malvern Manor has me uh, going full time, Mm -hmm. you know. Uh, filmmaking and all that fun stuff as well. I'm now on uh, the new network uh, that was started by Elizabeth Saint and Nick Groff called Vidi Space. Uh, so very fortunate to be a part of that fun little crew. Yeah. But yeah, man. Other than that, just uh, keep plugging away. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, well, tell me uh, what for the listeners who don't know what is Melvern Manor. Give us a, a brief rundown and history of the building. Absolutely. Um, so. Malvern Manor, you know, it started off, it was built in the late 1800s as a hotel. We know it was the fourth structure that was built in the town of Malvern, Iowa. Um, Primarily, like I said, it was a hotel. Um, It ran that way all the way up until the 1950s. At that time, it took kind of an odd turn and became what we would consider to be kind of like a nursing home. Um, for elderly folks and we know it didn't last very long Mm -hmm. Uh, the hallways weren't wide enough uh, to support transporting patients to and fro and so this is where history becomes like the most fascinating for me and it becomes um, what I consider to be a group home for mentally handicapped people and we're talking like the clientele is very interesting because we have people that are there who um, basically uh, have like classic addiction type cases, drugs, alcohol, things Mm -hmm. of that nature. Uh, People with Down syndrome, things that we see every day, uh, very common. And then you have the opposite side of the spectrum. You have people with, you know, multiple personalities, or I believe they call it DID nowadays. Um, You have people with schizophrenia. You have murderers even on premises. Like this is a very odd population of people coexisting uh, under the same roof together. So especially by today's standards so very interesting building with a rich history for sure so how did you end up with it (laughs) it was a complete uh happy little accident (laughs) so i was filming my first film called a brush with evil Mm -hmm. and 
Uh, we were across the street at this cool little place called the Classic Cafe. They have a slew of paranormal happenings. I didn't realize at the time of filming that there was a bar that's attached to this building. Oh, wait a um, second. So hold on. When... Hold on here. Hold on here. You're going to tell me that a paranormal investigator doesn't know where a bar is. <laughs> I don't even have time to drink. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. I'll give you a pass on this one. <laughs> so, like, it was interesting like because there, you know, with noise contamination and all that, uh -huh. there was no way that we were going to be able to uh, conduct any form of proper investigation. And I went outside, and I was uh, smoking my angry cigarette, as I call it, and uh, trying to come up with a plan B. Mm -hmm. And I met this gentleman who's like, well, I own this creepy building, and basically ran through the history that I just did with you. Um, and I was like, where is this place? And he's like, oh, it's just right across the street, just right over there. I was like, okay, I um, think we just became best friends, you know what I mean? <laughs> so um, he was nice enough to let us in the building that night, and we experienced more in the first two hours of entering the structure um, than we had in the last two years. Well, what did um, you experience? Anything. Um, so basically, it's, it's kind of interesting to me because it, it runs the gamut of activity. So you have physical manipulation of objects. You have... Um, you know, your clothes being tugged and pulled in the classic cold spots. But then you also have um, shadow figures and apparitions that are very, very uh, noticeable with the naked eye. You have uh, disembodied voices that are very audible. I mean, with hardly any equipment whatsoever, um, you're picking all these anomalies up and scratching your head the entire time. Uh, very, very interesting place for sure. So I knew that I was... Uh, I was hooked at that point, and uh, you know, as fate would have it, mm -hmm. uh, he took a uh, another job, had to sell the property, and I was like, "Ooh, ooh, pick me, pick me!" <laughs> so I was fortunate enough to uh, kind of swoop in there um, and uh, get the place. How rare, Josh, is it to find all the activity that you talked about under one roof? Um, in my experiences, it has been. Oh, we get a lot of EVPs in this location, or uh, we see things that we can't necessarily explain, um, and objects will be manipulated or what have you. Um, for me, I had never experienced a place where, you know, kind of dependent on where you are within this 10,000 square foot structure, mm -hmm. um, that you would be able to uh, experience pretty much everything, um, you know, if, if luck is with you as well. <laughs> so how do you explain this? It's uh, definitely interesting. I continually ask myself that every single day. Um, what exactly is the antecedent for activity, right? Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, you had like back in the hotel days, you have people coming and going constantly. You have all of this uh, hustle and bustle and businessmen, um, things of that nature. You have then the nursing home, mm -hmm. a lot of death obviously associated with that. But then like, I, I'm looking at the group home the hardest obviously and and the the mentality of these patients and these people and uh the one thing that i keep coming back to um there was a lot of negative things that did happen while this place was in business ultimately it was shut down uh for you know neglect abuse things of that nature terrible things but the one thing that i keep coming back to is that place was home no matter what um whether you get along with the guy across the hall or <laughs> or not uh you're still eating your meals together. You're still going to bed and waking up generally the same time. It's a family at that point, uh, in my opinion. And that's kind of what I keep coming back to. Um, so it's, again, it's such an interesting place. Have you been able to identify any of the apparitions or any of the residents uh, from the mm. other side? We have. Um, one of the more fascinating people is a lady that we call Gracie. Uh, Gracie was one of those exotic cases. Again, she was multiple personality, but she was also schizophrenic on top of all of that. Mm -hmm. We know she was institutionalized the majority of her life. Um, so she really didn't know any different of an atmosphere. Um, many times the nurses would hear male voices coming from Gracie's room. And <laughs> for obvious reasons, they had to go check that out. And so they would open the door and they would find it was only her, but she could manipulate her voice to make it sound male, which is, fascinating um 
there was one evening in particular. It was a group of three nurses. Mm-hmm. They came and they sat with Gracie for just a single hour, and within that hour, they documented thirteen separate distinguishable personalities, which again is medically unheard of. Um, the different doctors and things that we've spoken with about this, um, they're like, well, the ballpark is like two to five personalities. So for her to have thirteen. I mean, it kind of makes you wonder if if small town Iowa facility that this was was a proper fit for her or if she could have been better serviced elsewhere, you know. So what happened to Gracie? She just eventually did pass away um, mm-hmm. while there in the facility. Now, it's interesting because we get a lot of activity, specifically if you are a male. Males receive the most uh, activity in that room. A lot of EVPs. Um, a lot of physical touch towards males, but she doesn't uh, necessarily like it uh, if you're lying on her bed or sitting in her wheelchair, um, which are still very much in that room. Everything is exactly the way I found it um, since entering that building. I have not moved a thing. Um, So, uh, but a lot of physical touch surrounding her. Uh, Sometimes uh, if a male is leaving the room, you'll hear very loud banging on the wall, right at the door frame, right as you're walking through, like, All right, Josh, hey, get back we, here. Josh, yeah. you and I have to do a bit of a cliffhanger. I've got to take my first break. Exo Nation, Josh Hurd is our special guest of this hour. And uh, Josh can be reached at www.joshherd.net. This is the Exo, and I am Rob McConnell. Josh and I will return talking more about Malvern Manor and uh, why the ghosts kind of reach out and touch someone. We'll be back on the other side of this break. Don't go away. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, if you would like to watch the Exxon TV channel with all the programming we have available 24 7, 365 on Simul TV, you have to get either the top set box, in which also comes with the 80 specialty channels on Simul TV, 500 video games, movies on demand, and much more. Visit www.simultv. Dot com. Josh Hurt is my special guest, and we're talking about Melvern Manor, of which Josh is the proud proprietor of the manor and all those living and dead who reside in it. Are you there, Josh? I am here. All right, leave Gracie <laughs> alone and get back to the interview. I understand that she's got a certain thing for you. What's that? I said, I'll leave Gracie alone. Oh, I see. <laughs> uh, I see. You know, great. So, all right. So, why do you think Gracie is hanging around there? Like, you know, why hasn't she gone to the light? Why doesn't she have her harp and wings by now? Right. That's a great, great question. And I think, like, honestly, like that question right there is the one that um, haunts me the most. <laughs> is why is it that certain spirits, you know, reside anywhere? Yeah. Or would hang out anywhere. Um, a lot of people have different, you know, different thoughts on that, mm-hmm. whether you're a, a Christian, you know, or, and believe in this or that or whatever. Um, it's quite a fascinating uh, discussion to have. So it's, it's interesting to me because I do know, like, in the Bible, it would say, you know, um, all souls, both living and dead, are all judged on the same day, which is right. what uh, we come to know as Judgment Day, mm-hmm. which I guess if you look at... Christianity itself, and maybe the oldest form of organized religion in Catholicism, you have this idea of uh, purgatory, uh, neither here nor there. Um, I don't know, man. Like, it's so interesting to me that they 
could be hanging out, you know? Well, let or, me ask, let me ask you this. this let me ask you this. As a paranormal investigator doing EVPs, uh, do you ask these spirits, these ghosts, why they're sticking around? And, and what do they tell you? You know, honestly, I have asked the question, and I have never got a legitimate response. Wow. Um, usually, like, and especially at the manor, we have some some of our resident spirits mm-hmm. are uh, what I would – uh, can consider be quite smart alecky. Um, they will, uh, it's a lot of tongue in cheek humor with them. Um, sometimes they'll just call you bad names just for the heck of it. Mm-hmm. Like it's, uh, it's pretty interesting, but I think they're having just as much fun as the investigators. But, but <laughs> you know, I thought these people weren't playing with a full deck. So why would they in the afterlife all of a sudden, right. You know, start firing on all cylinders. Mm-hmm. It's kind of interesting too. Um, it's uh, it's a mystery, that is for sure. Now, I do know that mm-hmm. uh, we do have some that would uh, kind of portray those traits, uh, like, you know, not playing with a full deck, like yeah. you were just saying. Um, we have one lady in particular. Uh, she was a middle-aged patient. Uh, mentally, however, she was closer to the age of around eight, maybe nine years old. So, like, when we entered the building, there were still, like, coloring books and activity books. Um with her name, Susie, written Sound, all over them. Sounds like our and, green room. <laughs> it's pretty interesting. And so, like, um, going through there, um, you know, asking her, mm-hmm. because with her specifically, the activity is contained to that room. And okay. we're not quite sure why that would be. Now, when asked, why don't you leave the room like the others do? The other spirits are, are fairly transient and will follow you all over the place. Um but when asked, she says, I'm scared. He won't let me leave, you know, things of that nature. And I don't know who he is yet. Uh, I would love to get to the bottom of that. Um, but, yeah, very, very interesting stuff, but very childlike in behavior. Could the he be an orderly, a male nurse, or a doctor? Quite possibly. Quite possibly. And she's just um, still in mm-hmm. the, the time. The late 80s, the early 90s, when she did reside there, you know? It's very interesting. Josh, how about the staff that worked there? Are there any spirits or ghosts of the past staff or the uh, ghost and spiritual residents, those residents who were there as patients? There is um, there is one nurse mm-hmm. um who does not like to really make her presence known that often, but she has been captured before um, on, you know, down in what we call the nursing home wing. It was a newer section of the building that was put on in the fifties. Um, but as far as, you know, that goes, that's pretty much all we get. Now it's interesting because down there in that wing, we do get more, um, we get more activity when you are playing the role of a nurse or a doctor um, and you have you have pills or, or something like uh-huh. people will put candy in a in a pill bottle. All right, so and kind of shake it around. Okay, so you know? am I correct in understanding that you play doctor in your man? <laughs> Whatever it takes, right? Okay. <laughs> anything, anything to elicit Any, a response. <laughs> anything goes. <laughs> but yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. You're like, oh, I'm on your game, Josh. I get you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so this 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 nurse, um, the fact that she doesn't want to be uh, bothered, does this would you know does this show a different personality of of a ghost, one that wants to stay elusive compared to one that wants to interact? Right. Now we do have in. And that's another thing that we do have. Like, the place, in my opinion, will play mind games Mm -hmm. on you. From entering the building until you leave, you are going to be head donked in every way, shape, and form. And it's it starts with what I call the cat and mouse stuff, right? So you you will hear something down one hallway, and you'll chase after it, and then you will hear the exact same thing from where you just came from, Mm -hmm. Um, and that will that will continue for hours and hours. Um, all the while you're getting, you know, EVPs and certain little things here and there, um, just to keep you going. But the place, um, it's almost like it knows 
our moves before we make them. It's pretty interesting. Have you seen very many physical manifestations of spirits or ghosts? Very much so. So we have one in particular that we call the Shadow Man. Um, the Shadow Man, it's a very interesting story, but in that nursing home wing, mm -hmm. there is all the way down at the end of the hall um, a very tall, black, uh, humanoid figure that will come out of room number two. He will turn, and he will charge at you. Now, this obviously is sending the majority of people running to the hills. Um, it's, it's very unnatural movement. Quite literally speaking, like in the distance of 30 to 40 feet, it is traveling that distance in less than a second. It is moving that fast. Um, now, I would suggest this is something more residual in mm -hmm. nature. Um, it was quite interesting because the, uh, the day after Paranormal Lockdown episode aired, on TLC, I got a phone call from a nurse who used to work there. She said, in room two, there was a gentleman who was six foot seven. He was nonverbal, mentally deranged. He had killed a few people in the past. And his claim to fame was whenever they were doing bed checks or rounds, he would come out of the room and chase who was ever doing the documentation. Um, so very fascinating that we're seeing similar uh, behaviors with this shadow man as this gentleman's behavior was in life. Um, but again, a few people have been lucky enough to capture this phenomenon on video, which is quite something as well, What about terrifying. What about fully identifiable apparitions? <laughs> That's a little bit more difficult there. Um, so there is one gentleman uh, called the captain. Mm -hmm. The captain used to uh, run the building back in the early 1900s and a lot of people are claiming to definitely see him up on the second floor um and i'm, I'm fairly confident in saying he isn't uh too too cool with what we're doing there <laughs> he is a uh, kind of a pissy old guy that's for sure why would the spirits care while you're while you're there you know they're there they're dead they shouldn't be there they're dead and right. you're the owner of the property and you're just trying to investigate why mm. they're there why not have a symbiotic relationship why is there hostility with some ghosts and others are just there for a good time and i think there have been enough people that have come through there and don't get me wrong i will never tell anybody how to investigate or run an investigation but i think there are some people that have come in there and stirred the pot so to speak uh they uh like disrespect to use provocation why? <laughs> and uh really really upset them but isn't that isn't uh, that being disrespectful to those who have passed like oh, you know I, I find that so rude and so wrong I do too. yeah i do too um but again like if that's if that's what they do to uh or if that's the method that they use to get responses you know but that's your property why would you tolerate this, that right now that's just it so they can do it. I mean, that's fine. Now, me, myself, I have personally done it on different locations, not my own or whatever, um, for specific reasons. Um, there's always kind of a method to my madness, right? All right, Josh, but, stand by. We've got to take our news break at the bottom of the hour. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I don't go along with that one bit, whether there's yeah. a reason or not. It's disrespectful to those who have passed because, actually, we're talking about human beings who are no longer with us. And in my opinion, exactly. they should be respected at all costs. We'll be back on the other side of this break as we continue with Josh Hurd. His website is joshherd.net, and we're talking about his home, Malvern Manor in Iowa. I'm Rob McConnell. This is The Exxon. Don't go away. All right, Exxon Nation, I've got a couple of statistics for you. Oh, just one major one this hour. The current edition of the X Chronicles newspaper has been downloaded in over 8,700 cities around the world that we can track by IP addresses. 
unknown, we're looking at another 6,000 some odd locations around the world. That's about 14,000 different cities where the X Chronicles newspaper has been downloaded. So to all those people who have downloaded it, read it online at www.xchroniclesnewspaper.com, thank you so much. It's also available now on Kindle and on Amazon.com in paperback form. Josh Hurd is my guest, and uh, his website is www.joshherd.net. We're talking about Josh's haunted manor. Wow. First time I've ever <laughs> had a guest on who owns a haunted manor. There we go. You're a first, Josh. Uh, oh, it's called news. Malvern Manor. Welcome back to the show. Always great talking to you. Oh, thank you much. Thank you. So here you've got, how many rooms are there all told in your manor? There are 28 rooms. Wow. And um, I understand that you have different people, different tours, and, and other investigators who come in. And, and what, what can they expect? I think as far as like the overnight investigations go, mm -hmm. you can expect to come in and <laughs> uh, hopefully have your head on a swivel because you're not going to know which way to look next. Um, there's sometimes absolute nothing going on and then everything all at once, and it will continue that way for hours. Um, it's pretty impressive. Like I said before, like it's an amazing place. It really is. So I, I guess your Melvern Manor is a paranormal investigator's dream come true. It really is, honestly. Like, not to, you know, not to, I guess, toot my own horn, I guess. But no, it really is. It's interesting. What's the scariest thing that's happened to you there? Personally, the scariest yeah. thing for me, um, now, three different times I have experienced what we would call the, the shadow man right. that I was uh, describing earlier. And... The first two times, it completely caught me off guard. Uh, I was out the front door faster than anybody should ever see me run. <laughs> um, it was a little ridiculous. Um, I can't even imagine the uh, the curse words that were coming out of my mouth, but uh, it was pretty impressive. But the third time, it's, it's interesting to me because when the phenomenon happens, people are getting rushed at, and our, obviously our natural reaction is to flinch. Yeah. Um, well... Uh, the second you flinch, it, the phenomenon's passed. It's done. It's over with. Nobody's getting hit, scratched, punched, pushed, nothing. Um, so I wanted to see what would happen if we were to just stand our ground, not flinch, not run, not anything, not even react, and what would happen then? And so I stood there, and it took a solid three hours of me just standing there, seemingly talking to the walls. And when this finally happened for mm -hmm. me i did not run this time but i definitely still flinched um which i'm a little upset at myself about uh because now i know i have to do this again <laughs> and uh i'm not really looking forward to that but uh that is definitely the most terrifying experience inside the inside the manor for me personally josh if if this if this patient only did this charge at bed check time mm-hmm would it not make sense that the only time that he would come out of this room and charge is at the same time each and every Correct. night or the approximate time? Correct. And so that's why I'm still leaning towards mm -hmm. a residual type of haunt. However, a time of day, it doesn't seem to matter. Um, a specific time of year doesn't seem to matter. Weather patterns, um, even different, uh, you know, uh, phases of the moon like mm -hmm. we're trying everything that we possibly can think of here um, but we're coming up empty handed it's just happening whenever it wants to happen it would seem so it's, it's super weird is Melbourne Manor uh, on any electromagnetic lines or mm -hmm. ley lines mm -hmm. or are there any high tension wires nearby that would explain the, the amount of common paranormal activity that is that is created there or that happens there as far as ley lines go i'm not i'm not sure mm -hmm. on that um that would be something that i would love to look into um now as far as like the the wiring and things of that nature there's really not uh any high tension wires or anything running alongside of it right anything like that 
Um, there's certainly no like power plants or anything like that close to us either. Um, have the city? So I don't know. Have the city engineers been called in to try and <laughs> make sense of what's going on? No, not really. Why not? <laughs> if anybody in Malvern, uh, they they keep a fair distance. They're very supportive. I mm -hmm. will say that the the whole city of Malvern has been very supportive, but they they keep a fair distance. <laughs> well, I, I I guess they would be supportive since paratourism is is a big thing these days. Sure, absolutely, yeah. How about black mold? Has the property been checked for black mold? We have been checked for black mold. We do not have hmm. that, thank goodness, because um, that would not be fun. So when people come overnight, are they locked in? No, sir. They, they're they able to uh, come and go as they please. Right. And I always, you know, set out the menus uh, for the different eateries around Malvern. If they want to go out, grab a bite, come mm -hmm. back, do whatever, I always leave a key. Um, so they're, you know, they can come and go and lock up behind themselves and do whatever they wish. Um, you know, I, I want it to be as accommodating as a place as it possibly can be, even though it does get fairly gritty in some sections of the house. I will say that. <laughs> are, are you planning on making it into a haunted B&B? &B? Oh, God, no. <laughs> no, I don't think we'd uh, get very far there. Um, besides... What has happened at Melvern Manor? What is the scariest thing that has happened to you as a paranormal investigator? That would go back to kind of what set me on all this this journey. Um, but it was watching one of my friends go out of a window um, of an old chapel that we were investigating when I was still kind of young, dumb, and in college. Mm -hmm. um, and that, for sure, was... The most terrifying knowing that something is out there that is able to you know lift and physically manipulate another human being that right there um i don't know i think it was a good lesson to learn mm -hmm. right out of the gate um but yeah for sure i i always go in uh kind of with my guard up no matter where i'm at <laughs> all right help me understand this and help our listeners understand this how can something that is not seen, that has no weight, no mass, mm -hmm. that basically does not exist in this realm of reality, pick somebody up and put them out a window? In my personal opinion, yeah, I think that whatever that was, mm -hmm. was something not necessarily of this earth. Um, I, I hate to use the D word. You know what I mean? I don't want to say, oh, it was a demonic whatever. I don't want to say that, but I, I will say that it's something far beyond our understanding. But how, how can that exist if it's beyond <clears throat> our understanding? How can we say it is something that is not from this earth? How can we, <laughs> how can we, how can we put it into a classification if we have no like, knowledge? And if we don't have any knowledge, why right. is... Why is there not more serious scientific investigation going into this phenomenon than there is? I think the problem with, as far as science goes mm -hmm. um, and scientific investigation, which I'm all about, the problem is we would have to have some form of a uh, controlled environment. We would have to have something that's repeatable. Um, and that, in my experience, is, is pretty much an impossibility. Um, I, I don't know. Um, but I do know that, you know, as far as like the actual scientific method itself, it's mm -hmm. pretty much shot to hell just because we don't have anything that is necessarily repeatable. Well, let's take, for example, your, your shadow figure who's six foot mm -hmm. seven, who comes charging out of a, out of a room. Now he is a right. repeatable Correct. event. Well, is there scientific investigations being condemned, uh, con conducted on on Melbourne Manor. I don't mean paranormal investigators. I mean right. credible, bona fide scientists. And as far as that goes, not yet. Why not? I would love to entertain that. I would absolutely welcome anybody in there who is willing to do that. Um, because as of right now, all we do have are people, um, investigators, paranormal investigators, who will come in with um, you know, very specific types of equipment, uh, SLS cameras and, and, and things of the, 
of that nature and you know laser grids and, and things like that right um that's all we have uh, why if there were something else but, like, but i would love to test what is going on in mm-hmm. the atmosphere around the room when mm-hmm. this is going on what is happening like and does that atmosphere change um does that atmosphere around said entity change while it's in motion you see i would love to see any of this data you see this is what i can't understand with all this all these paranormal events happening the mm-hmm. scientific community that has the yes. equipment that has the resources the financial backing as well as the network required to fully investigate and understand these phenomena they don't want to touch it yeah and i think i mean ultimately that's kind of a tragedy yeah stand um, stand by josh you and i have to take our sure. final break buddy yeah interesting melvern manor in iowa our good friend Josh Hurd is the innkeeper of this spectacular place. <laughs> and you can find out more about Josh at his website, joshherd.net. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell, and I'll be back with Josh as we wrap up this hour on the other side of this commercial break. Don't, don't go away. Welcome back, everyone. This is the Exxon. I'm Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center and studios in beautiful Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Now, if you would like to send me an email, my email address is exxon at exxonradiotv.com on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. And to find out about the programming we have available for you 24 7, 365 on the Exxon Broadcast Network and on Simul Radio, visit www xzbn.net or simulradio.com. Now for the programming that our good friend Steve Turner and the gang at Simul TV have, as well as how you can get your very own uh, two-set box that includes 500 video games, 80 specialty channels, of which the Exxon TV channel is one, and all the movies, television shows that you can download on demand, visit www simultv.com Josh Hurd's website www.joshherd.net All right Josh so what are your future plans for the manor You know as far as the future plans go man like I want to make the building you know as structurally sound as possible uh, other than that like I don't want to really do much mm-hmm. um as far as the the innards of the place you know again like the place is exactly the way I found it yeah. the better part of four years ago now. And I think that really kind of adds something to the integrity of the place from an investigative standpoint. Right. Um, and so I want people to experience the place, you know, exactly the way I did upon entering. Is there a possibility, Josh, that if you were to start changing things around that the <laughs> paranormal activity may increase? I would absolutely suggest yes. <laughs> I would say yes. I think these people have uh, come accustomed to you know, how things are, how yeah. things work, and how they run. And I think they have a very set schedule that they're on. Um, but So I, I do think that disrupting that would, uh, would definitely throw a curveball. <laughs> how, many, how many spirits, entities, ghosts, or shadow people have you been able to catalog so far? I think we are right at um, 10 distinguishable uh, personalities or entities. Residents? Yes, resident spirits is what I usually refer to them as. Uh, that doesn't include that one member of the staff. Correct, okay. correct. And I'm still waiting to get a, uh, a name for her. 
because I would really like to do some historical type research on her as well. Since you've uh, been the proprietor, innkeeper, or head shrink of this place. <laughs> Chief cook and bottle washer. <laughs> that's right. Well, I wasn't going to say that because I didn't want to uh, go down that road because then I'd start asking you a whole bunch of different questions, but we'll right, skip that for right. now. Um, have you had past um, staff members or even past residents come to take a visit at their old alma mater? We have indeed. Um, one of the first items of business for me personally, like after acquiring the place, was um, to have some of the former staff that were there mm -hmm. um, walk me through the building. Just tell me what they remembered about the place. Right. Um, you know, and it was really, really cool because at that point, you know, they're giving the place personality. And I, I really like that. Now, we did also have a group of people who did used to live there um, come through as a, a bigger group. And, you know, wanted to take the tour and just kind of look around and, and walk around and reminisce a little. So it was really cool. You, you mentioned a tour. Uh, what kind of, would this be a, pa a haunted tour, a paranormal tour that you give to the public? That's correct. Uh, every day we're open for tours, except for Mondays. Uh, and, but yeah, I will walk you through the building, uh, tell you the history and some of the claims of paranormal happenings. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, that takes about 20 minutes to a half hour. And then I just kind of turn you loose and <laughs> let you go and explore uh, what may interest you the most. So, yeah. Have you had a skeptic enter uh -huh. and, and exit a believer? You know, is it very interesting. So last week we actually had a gentleman who is a UFC fighter uh, come through. Mm-hmm. And he was in the back uh, hallway area uh, where the shadow man is seen. And he um, was running his mouth, so to speak. <laughs> um, but he said, you're not going to scare me. You're not going to do this. You're not going to do that. I don't even really believe in this stuff. Blah, oh, blah, blah. the famous last words. That's right. So he said, and this is just according to him outside um, because he refused to go back in. But he um, – he felt uh, what felt like him being choked, like fingers around his throat. Um, and he said, you know, you're not going to scare me. And it was right after that that he felt the fingers. And then he heard a voice in his ear whisper, how about now? Whoa. And he got out. And I'm not lying when I say this, but the gentleman was in tears outside for 90 solid minutes. Like this really shook him, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so he, he's definitely a believer now. Um, but we have had more than a handful of, of skeptics come through and uh, been turned on their heels, so to speak. So very interesting place. Are you worried as the proprietor that someone may actually suffer a physical, um, a physical push, a physical punch that could cause an injury? Every day. And that's why, you know, during the tour that I'm always give everybody before mm -hmm. um, they enter, I always warn people. I'm like, no, look, like we have had a few people that have been punched, scratched, um, hair pulled, things of that nature. I'm like, however, all of that has happened after they were you know, provoking. Okay. Um, again, so I, I always give fair warning. Um, I'm like, look, <laughs> if you don't want something like that to happen, I would probably shy away from from uh, using harsh language or you know uh, talking down to them in any way. I mean, like, just, just show them some respect. Exactly. How about members of the clergy? Have you had any members of the clergy uh, take the tour and walk through? We have never had uh, – well, there was one former member of clergy mm -hmm. um, who now does this as a, as a hobby um, who has come through. And, he, I mean, he's fascinated by the place. Um, he, he definitely believes, obviously, the, the phenomenon exists, and that's why he's doing this. But, yeah. Um, he's the only one that I can really think of that has come through, uh, taken the tour, and, and you know stayed multiple nights now. Excellent. Uh, my, in my experience, most um, manors or uh, homes uh, mm -hmm. for the mentally challenged, they've always had some sort of animal that has been part of the establishment because animals have a natural ability to, you know, to to quiet people to calm these kind of mm -hmm. patients any any spirits of animals or any hauntings by animals in your place 
it's so funny. Like I was uh, on tour with a film, mm -hmm. and uh, so I wasn't there. But there was people that had stayed at the manor the night before, then drove hundreds of miles to see our film, and uh, they pulled me aside after the show, and they said we saw a cat. And like they they could have swore they're like you have a cat that is loose in your building. We saw it uh, multiple times. I'm like guys, there is there is no cat in the in the building. I promise you, uh, <laughs> there's no way that a cat even got in there. Right. Like sorry, but no. <laughs> but that has happened a couple different times that people have seen a cat. Are, are the hauntings or, or the activity, I should say, is it limited to the daytime, to the nighttime, or does it happen 24 hours a day? That's what's fascinating to me about it. Is it now, the place definitely takes on a different uh, personality, it would seem, during the evening. Oh, sure, all uh, places do, yeah. Right, but yeah, the, the activity seems to be going all the time. Really? It just does not stop, yes. Keeps you busy, does it? Very much so. <laughs> Josh, I, what are your final thoughts to the Exxon Nation tonight when it comes to the paranormal in general? You know, as far as the paranormal, I would say, you know, if people are interested in this, just read up. Read up as much as you possibly can. Just um, take in and devour as mm -hmm. much content as you possibly can. Like your show, for example. Books. Um, anything that you could possibly get your hands on, just read and listen and try to learn as much as possible. If somebody listening tonight wants to become a paranormal investigator and, and they decide to go online, now you and I both know there are many uh, flaky investigators <laughs> online, sure. and, I, and I'm being very generous because this is a family sure. show. <laughs> How do they best gauge who is legitimate and I'm not, a, I, you know, I, I'm not saying that I'm not pushing people to your website because I believe you're one of the most credible guys out there when it comes to this. Oh, I but, appreciate that. But if they, do, if they haven't heard from you, and shame on them for not listening to this show, if they haven't heard about you, how, do they, how would they best gauge who's real and who's a flake? You know, I would say watch some of the videos, mm -hmm. um, whatever you can find, and make sure to you know, skim around and, and yeah. look at the different forms of styles of investigating, the different personalities that are out there, um, and, and kind of be your own judge. Uh, but, you know, follow your gut instincts, so to speak. <laughs> to thine own self be true. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Josh, I want to thank you ever so much for joining us tonight. I wish you continued success. And who knows, maybe we'll... Uh... We'll send a camera crew down to Melbourne Manor and uh, have you guys as part of the, one of the uh, shows on the TV channel. You're welcome. Anytime, my friend. Anytime. Take Thank care you so of yourself. Much for having me. Hey, listen, in regards to you, your family, and to all the investigators and to the people who come and visit Melbourne Manor. Exo Nation Josh Hurd has been my special guest this hour, www.joshherd.net. Now, I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news as we continue here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Whatever you do, do not, I mean do not, go away. We'll be back.